All right, behavioral symptoms, eating more or less, um, eating more or eating less. Mm-hmm. <laughs> eating more, <laughs> more or less. More or less. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, sleeping too much or too little. Mm-hmm. I know, well, you know, it seems like when I get stressed out and I, and I hear my friends saying, well, I'm just going to go and sleep all day. I'm not, like, I don't sleep all day, but yeah. I could see how that would be a great, uh, you know, I mean, I know it's a sign of stress, but it's probably also, if you're stressed out, it's probably a really fun thing to do. <laughs> just sleep through it. Just like Bernie <laughs> says, the bed is my natural habitat. I just, that's where I go. I just <laughs> crawl right under the covers and yeah. sleep now. Yeah, I don't. I can't, when I'm stressed out, I, I usually, laying still is not my favorite thing. Usually it's about moving my body and working. Or, the hot tub. That, right. that works every time. Procrastination, neglecting responsibilities, which is so ironic because procrastinating and neglecting responsibilities is probably what's going to cause even more stress. Right. It's gonna, <laughs> for me, that certainly would and does whenever I do that. Oh, and this is, this is big right now. Using alcohol or cigarettes or even drugs to relax, you know, and there's so many fun, excellent, perfect ways to get into that altered state. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about that today. So give you some of those, some more options to cigarettes and alcohol and drugs. To have that altered state naturally. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. You're exactly. Ex- oh, my God. <laughs> I'm exactly. <laughs> I'll have to do the same session you did. You can do it on me, what I did on you. Okay. To get rid of it. Perfect. Okay. Nervous habits, nail biting and pacing. That's a good sign of stress. Teeth grinding and jaw clenching. I know I've done a lot of work on that in my practice where people come in. With the TMJ? With the TMJ, mm-hmm. exactly. Hypnosis is really great for that. Well, any kind of, you know, stress. So you're going to feel that stress in your body and it's energy it's it's stuff that needs to move in your body and mm-hmm. we don't have any way to move it so we just hold it in our body and and it's you know we t- we said this before in our show we talk about this in class your issues are in your tissues so everything that's showing up in your in body is is it has a direct relationship to how your body is feeling mm-hmm. and that fight or flight or parasympathetic that safety zone so also, um, overdoing activity. So, overdoing exercise and shopping. That's oh, interesting. That's, that's so me sometimes. Like when I decide I'm going to like walk 10 miles and then lose a toenail. Yeah, that's me. I can totally go into overdoing. What is the toenail? I don't get that part. Walk 10 miles and lose a toenail. Well, it's not like it's that what you give up at the finish line or anything. It's just that I was walking so much that my toenail kept oh. hitting and I wasn't listening <laughs> I to I the thought pain it was like your goal. I was like, <laughs> what? That's interesting. I want to walk 10 miles and lose a toenail. No, it was the result of me not listening to, to your stop body, right? Because I was stressed. I just kept going and going and going. And then goodbye, toenail, and my okay, poor little second it. toe. Yeah, for like. Ouch. Yeah, so Ouch. anyhow, moving Ouch. on. Okay, overeating. Overreacting to unexpected problems. That seems pretty obvious, but um, mm-hmm. to me, I know um, we've talked about like that nonviolent communication and violent communication and how overreacting when we're communicating with people is usually a sign of stre- you know, being stressed. Mm-hmm. And picking fights with others. Mm-hmm. There's a couple there I want to talk about, too. Okay, um, yeah. Um, depression or general unhappiness can be a warning sign of too much stress or a sense of loneliness and isolation. When we do some of the emotional work that we do, a lot of times what comes up for folks I see um, is that they feel like they're alone or completely disconnected from others. That's kind of a lie that they're running about what their experience is. And I find this really fascinating because I look at our society more and more and I make up, this is just my perception, that with all the technology we have now, we're, our stri- we're striving to get more connected, but it seems to isolate us even more. Instead of, you know, picking up the phone and chatting, there's a text message, which is great in some instances, but we, we tend to fall back on an email instead of a personal phone call or um, different things like this. And it's all about, I see the Internet as all as like we're, we're trying to connect, and then we go about doing it with all these artificial means. So I say, bring back the pop-in. Bring back yeah. the knocking on the door and say, do you want to have a cup of coffee? You know, picking up the phone and calling your friends, your neighbors, your family. And calling your friends to come over and talk, not to sit on the phone and talk. You know, I, I have friends call me and they're like babbling and babbling and babbling. I'm like, oh, is this going to go on for a while? Are you talking about me? No, no. no. Well, you, you know, <laughs> we, we live far enough apart where, you know, popping back and forth isn't as convenient. But I have friends who live pretty close to me and um, after like 50 
15 minutes, I'm like, are we going to be doing this for a while? Because I can come over and do this. Right. I'm not, I don't really like talking on the phone that much. I was at dinner the other night, and um, there were two, there was a family, and there were uh, mom and dad and two kids, and mm-hmm. it, they were separated. Like, mom and dad were sitting here, and the two kids were sitting here. That is the plan for they were keeping things under keeping, control. Oh, is that how, so is that yes, how your parents you do it? Just keep them separated? Con- oh, you have sure. to divide and conquer. Yeah, yes. right. It's so you've got a parent in between the kids. Yes, it's a strategy. <laughs> but what I noticed was the kids... It was a daughter and a son, and they were about the same age. They were teenagers, like 14 and maybe 15, 13, 14, something around there. And they were texting each other at the table. Mom and dad were doing their thing. It was actually a pretty quiet, pretty quiet dinner for them Mm -hmm. because mom and dad were talking a little bit, but the kids were texting back and forth. I thought, why don't they just, like, I don't get it. Like, you have a daughter. Why don't they just talk? (laughs) Like, why can't they just use their outside voice? That looks like so much work. And, and I think we're sounding old. Uh oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it just snapped like those darn kids. Those darn kids. That music is so loud. How can they stand it? You call that so music? Loud. Yes. Yeah, but you know, now we're talking about connecting, and right. I get the technology, and I get how fun it would be to text each other. I text my niece. You know, that's how. I forget about calling. It's not about calling. She lives um, in Washington D.C. It's all about texting with her. You know, but she's not sitting across the table. <laughs> Right. I don't know. I just found that to be so amusing. So the reason I went off on on this whole little my little soapbox is that if if you were having the experience of feeling isolated and stressed and depressed, just sitting down. It doesn't even have to be a human. Sit down with a pet, a dog, a cat. Pet and talk. Connect with another living thing. A plant. A tree. I have a tree in my front yard. I call him Simpson, and I go out. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm looks working, like a Simpson actually. Yeah, when I when I'm you know kind of feeling like I really want to talk to somebody but nobody's around. Like if I'm working at home during the day, I'll walk outside and I'll talk to Simpson. I know there's that crazy lady on the street talking to her tree again, but I don't really care if people think that because I'm connecting in a way that needs to be for me with something that's living. I think I just exposed way too much about myself. I know. Right I'm there. thinking she could have talked about Mr. McCutey. Yeah, you know, at least cat, talking to the yeah. cat. You <laughs> but know? I talk to a tree sometimes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> send us your crazy, not crazy, but send us the ways that you distress um, and, or rather get rid of stress or let stress or relax yourself, that's a good way of saying it. You know, some of them might be a little bit different than what's out in the mainstream and hallelujah. Let's start changing the paradigm. Yeah, I mean, there's so many different things we can do. I know I was, I wrote down something for even chewing food. You know, I know sometimes when I eat. Rather than swallowing it whole? Exactly. But you know, you're laughing at that. But have you, have you ever really watched? A couple of years ago, a friend of mine said that you should be chewing food 25 times. Like when you put food in your mouth, you should do it 25 times. So I started doing that. Mm-hmm. And number one, it's changed my whole experience around food. Like I actually really enjoy the food and everything's really slowed down for me when I eat. And that's really cool. Mm-hmm. But what I've noticed is how other people, it's kind of like uh, you don't have dogs. I have three big dogs and I feed them food and they're these big chunks of food. And in one second it's gone and I know they couldn't have chewed it and swallowed it in that amount of time so they're just swallowing their food whole and I see humans doing that also where they put food in their mouth and they're talking and it's gulp I mean that can't be good for you and and plus I would make up it, that it would be on this list eating too fast would be something that would be a good sign of stress you know oh yeah I can really see that Myself, I have a friend who is probably one of the most relaxed people I've ever met in my life. She has a very hectic life, but she really takes it all in stride. And um, she's one of the slowest eaters I've ever met in my entire life. And she jokes about it all the time, but she does. She just takes her time. So, yeah, I can see how that it makes all the difference in the world. Try it. I will try it the next time. <laughs> it's really time. kind of fun. Like to just me. really. We'll make a game okay, of it. we will. We'll make a game of it. Even just to slow down the eating process is really, really kind of fun. So, um, and uh, here's some internal causes of stress that they talk about so in this article. Causes of stress. Okay. Yeah, some of the causes of stress. Um, they have the daily causes of stress would be, which could be environmental, family, and relationships. I know there's a lot of stress around that. As much as we all love each other, there's so much history and so much, so much stuff that we've accepted and decided about each other throughout our and lives about and, and about ourselves and programming that. Yeah, it's pretty intense um, around family and relationships. And this is the time of the year where all that's showing up again. Thanksgiving's coming and and um, Christmas, Christmas and the New Year's and stuff. So people are going to be visiting their families. 
Yeah, call us, email us. We'll tell you some great things you can do to really give yourself a new experience and, and some really great tools. We talked about last week on our show some great tools that people can use for the holiday stress. Right. 